Uh, but the first headline we're going to be looking at today is about Dusan Vlahovic. Um, obviously, Mike McGrath from The Telegraph was talking a bit about him last night, saying he is a priority for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, was it interesting that he's saying that he's a priority for Tottenham to partner Kane? And with the price that they're going to be looking at him of fifty million, it sounds a bit too fishy to me. Yeah, he says it could could exceed about forty million pounds the deal. So very very expensive. He's only twenty one years of age. So you're thinking if 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 you're thinking he could be a replacement for Kane, it's a bit you it's a bit of um despite his clear talent, had a massive breakout season last season from Fiorentina, scored twenty one goals in Serie A, um, big strong um, striker. But you don't want to have a be reliant on him, I think, just yet. He's only had one great season for yeah. Fiorentina. He's definitely a player I'd want. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a player I would be very interested in getting. And if he was to be partnering Harry Kane, I think he's a he's a player that not only is he big and strong and he's good in the air, but he's actually not a, not not a slouch either. He's actually got a decent turn of pace and he's got quite good decent mobility for um, a tall striker. And obviously he's got a deadly finish, really good composure. So um, I'd definitely be interested in signing him, but I wouldn't want him to be our main replacement for Kane. I think that's a bit too much pressure on the sh shoulders of a young player, yeah. really. Um, it's interesting because they're saying that um, that they want him to partner Kane. They're saying that mm. that. Um, that he thinks Nuno is planning to play with two up top next season. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds a bit too fishy to me. I don't think we're going to be signing a striker for 40, 50 million. Uh, and I don't think we're going to be playing with two up top next year. So I think it's... Um, I do kind could of... Could be him and Son. Yeah, could be. I, I do feel that this, a 40, 50 million pound striker, will be uh, to eventually replace Kane, whether it be this year or next year. But I can't see Vlahovic try coming in to play second fiddle, to be honest, with the season he's just had. Um, yeah, but I think... Uh, yeah, I mean, he want to go into a new club now knowing that he's number two. After unless the we're, unless we're playing two up top. I yeah. mean, why not? Why Do you think we we're going to be playing two up top? I mean, judging by pre-season, though, but um, there's no reason why we can't develop a system where we can play two up top. He did it many times at Wolves. It did require us playing um, Wolves playing three at the back, mm -hmm. but he did it many times. He played Jota and Jimenez up front together yeah. uh, many times. So clearly he knows how to get a system to play that way. And I think getting a partner in with Harry Kane uh, would definitely be helpful because as much as I enjoy... Uh, him playing up front on his own and he can hold the ball up and he can get one from wide positions. If he had a partner with him, then what, once he gets the ball, he'll have a partner, he'll have a runner right next to him who he can um, play through and he'll have the wingers as well. So I think it could work very, very well if Kane, if Kane has a partner up front with him. And I'll definitely be very excited if we sign Vlahovic and his ability to link up with Kane would be exciting. Um, but I, having said that, yeah, 50 million, that does scream to be like we're, we're planning for life without Kane if we spend that amount of money on a striker. Yeah. I'm thinking if we spend a bit, of, if, we, if, we, if we're signing a backup striker or a, or, um, a striker who's not going to be first choice um, to support Kane, you'd think you're not going to spend more than 20, 30 million on him. So if we're spending that amount of money, it's big money. Um, so it does tell does tell me that I, I'm not so sure. Either I'm not so sure this one is is viable for us, or is it actually planning for life without Kane? Because if you think Vlahovic and Son up front as well, that wouldn't be a bad partnership. It wouldn't like a target man with a player running off him would be yeah. quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad partnership at all. And there's also Vlahovic is a striker who can play on his own. He's proven that with mm -hmm. uh, Fiorentina. So. It would, be, it would definitely be a, um, a signing to excite me. And I can understand why he's the number one aim uh, for Tottenham because he's young as hell, 21 years of age. Yeah. So that's really, really um, good age to get him in. So, I mean, we'll have to see how this one progresses. Mike McGrath is usually very reliable. So if he says that, we're very interested in him. Apparently, he said as well in his article that um, Danny Ings was our number one target. And then once since Paratici come has come in, we've widened our scope for targets. Seems as though that's the, that's the case in every position where uh, before Fabio Paratici came in, Joe Chim Anderson was our first choice centre-back pretty mm -hmm. much. That's what it seemed like. And he's come to Crystal Palace and we've set ourselves, our sights a bit higher. So um, in terms of a Danny Ings, would you prefer a Danny Ings for like 20 million? Um, or would you prefer Vlahovic for like 50 million? Vlahovic. Yeah, I would agree that. But again, if we do sign Vlahovic, it says to me that we are looking to sell Kane this summer. Yeah, but if I know that, but I'm just saying, if who, who would I rather buy right now? It would be Vlahovic, just because he's uh, younger, 
bigger scope to um bigger scope to improve and uh, Danny Ings you know if we sign him um he's he's 28 maybe 29 now obviously he's Premier League proven so you can come and make an instant impact but injury records as yeah, well yeah his injury record is is not great and with Vlahovic you could easily get that like a, a lot of that money back anyway even if he has a one poor season you could easily get most of that money back after a season with Ings if he has a poor season that's it all that money's pretty much gone or whatever you spend on him you're not going to get much, you're not going to get any of that back. So, I think Vlahovic 100% would be uh, someone. I think look, Vlahovic is the future of these kind of players, the young younger players coming through when uh, they're performing really really well. So, I think that these are the players we've got to aim for to regenerate the squad. Yeah, and it's also worth noting actually, like about five days ago, I think it was now, uh, Fabrizio Romano came out with that. Fabio Paratici absolutely loves uh, Vlahovic. Mm-hmm. Um, so look, it is one that I'd be excited about if it does come through the door, but I'm just a bit skeptical Skeptical if we are going to spend 40, 50 million on him. Yeah, I of really course. Am. Of course, I am also going to be like that, but... Um, I just you just got hope you just hope you got to at the moment take them on their word days to play with Kane, but we've heard it all before. That's the worrying thing. And uh, with Spurs, a lot of time with Levy, you know, leopards don't change their spots when it comes to Levy. <laughs> we know that for sure. <laughs>